what is business research and why do we do business research? Let's start to break this down. To understand what is business research, we need to first understand what is research. And uh, I asked my favorite large language model at the time for what is research and uh, what is scientific research. So research is something that is systematic. It is systematic investigation of something and we need, uh, the goal is to uh, use data to reach new conclusions and establish facts. So you might say that you are researching information on new bicycles. If you, are wanting, if you want to buy a bicycle, you want to collect information about bicycles. And then you can make an informed decision, for example. What is a scientific research? So uh, scientific research is a subset of research. And scientific research is something that uses scientific method. And on this course, we'll take a look a bit deeper what scientific method includes. And uh, simply, scientific method typically starts with a hypothesis or we might start with a research question. That is something that we either want to test. We might, for example, want to test if uh, waking up early makes you more productive. Or we might want to answer a question why are some people more productive than others? And to do so, we need to collect data. So scientific research involves collecting primary data. And it's not only about reading what others have been doing, but it is more about collecting information, some kind of data points, interviews, numbers, whatnot, and then draw new conclusions based on those. The data come, can come from observations or experiments. In observational studies, the scientist or the researcher is basically uh, passively observing what happens and then drawing conclusions from, from that data. In experiments, the researcher is an active participant trying out something and seeing what happens. We'll take a look at these two kinds of research designs later on during the course. Then scientific research is typically aimed at inc uh, increasing the knowledge or improving the, the knowledge in a particular field of science. So psychologists try to contribute to psychological science. Business researchers try to contribute to understanding of business. Okay, so that out of the way, we know, now know what is research. The next question is, why do we need research? What good does research do for us? So here's a list of certain things that research enables us to do. For example, physics research gave us airplanes. So we know some basic physical principles that allows us to construct airplanes. Before researching physics, this was not possible. Chemistry gave us uh, synthetic fertilizers. So most of the food production in the world would it be possible if we hadn't done research on chemistry? Computer science gave us internet and smartphones. And the list goes on. Material science gives us carbon fiber, lighter materials. Uh, uh, neuroscience allows us to treat uh, brain diseases. Uh, genetics, personalized medicine, uh, environmental science helps us understand, for example, climate change. So science generally allows us to understand make more informed decisions and it generally enables us to do things as a society that we hadn't, haven't been able to do before the scientific discovery was made. Now the question is, what does business research give us? So it's very easy to see that, that airplanes are useful, they rely on physics and research in physics, but what useful things does business research give us and where can we see the outcomes of business research. We need to start by understanding what is business research. And this is from our book. So the business research in the, uh, the Bell et al. book on business research methods defines business research as academic research. So academic refers to basically scientific research. It doesn't necessarily mean that it is impractical or not related to practice, but it is research typically done in universities for the purpose of advancing knowledge. It is also social science. So uh, sciences are divided into different categories. 
For example, physical sciences include chemistry and physics. Social sciences refer to sciences that study human behavior. And business is human behavior. So we have individuals that we can study who work in companies or who become entrepreneurs. We have teams that work in companies. We have larger organizations. These are all about human behavior and therefore they belong to social sciences. An important thing to understand is that business research in this context does not mean research done by a business. So business research tries to understand general business problems. Market research done within a single company that tries to uh, answer if there's demand for a specific product would not be business research according to this definition. So the difference between business research and research done in businesses is that business research tries to establish some general facts or general understanding that applies to many businesses. Whereas research studies, such as market research, customer satisfaction research, employment satisfaction surveys done within companies, try to establish understanding of facts relating to specific situation in a specific company. The methods that we apply in these two kinds of studies, business research and research done in businesses, are similar. So understanding one kind of research helps you to understand the other one. Now, let's take a look at what good is business research giving us. So here is again uh, my favorite large language model answering the question. Uh, business research has given us uh, quite a few different things. For example, <clears throat> organizational behavior and, um, and strategy give us different frameworks to think about how to run a business or how to uh, structure work. Marketing and consumer behavior allows us to, to do more effective marketing campaigns. Financial models give us, for example, the capital assets pricing model that is from academic research and so on. The important thing to understand here is that a large part of what you learn in a business school comes from business research. So uh, we teach you things that are based on research, some are based on, on experience, but a lot of things that we teach you in the school are actually based on research. And if you read books, they often cite research evidence to support the claims that the book made. Why is basing education and training on research a good idea? It is because we have quite a few of these management plans. So there might be ideas that someone came up with that sound very reasonable or sound very interesting or useful, and they might even work in a specific situation, but they don't work generally. So these beliefs that are not based on fact are called management facts. And here's a great book, for example, about them and how we can use evidence to uh, counter bad practices in management. Let's take a look at a few, a few examples. So I'm not going to go through all of them, but a few of these that I would like to highlight. There is, for example, stack ranking, which refers to uh, a, an HR practice where you grade or rank all employees, and then uh, you, you promote the ones that are best performing and you let go the ones that are the least performing. And you do this periodically. So uh, that was used in GE, and GE was a very highly successful company, therefore other companies thought that stack ranking is a good idea. But research demonstrated that this is actually really bad for productivity because it hurts team performance. People within organizations typically don't perform as individuals. They perform as teams. And research shows that when you make an individual compete against the members in their team, that hurts cooperation, which actually decreases the performance of the team. Another of my favorites is uh, multitasking. So multitasking refers to uh, doing many things at the same time, 
or doing many things uh, in a sequence where you switch between tasks quite often. And some people think that this increases productivity, but it actually decreases productivity because if you multitask, it's very difficult to focus intensively on the task at hand. There's a lot of research done by organizational psychologists, which are business researchers, on the drawbacks of multitasking, or as they say it, dual tasking, doing two things at the same time, or task switching, and switching from one task to another in quick succession. It is much better to work on something intensively for one hour and then work on something intensively on another for the second hour than to, to switch between tasks all the time. This is one of the reasons, for example, why all the notifications on my phone and my work computer are muted. I don't read my email all the time. I read my email a couple of times per day so that it does not interrupt my concentration on something, a single important task at a time. We know a lot of about mechanisms too, why multitasking or task switching is detrimental to performance. Knowing the mechanism is important because it allows us to counter the negative effects of multitasking in the cases where we absolutely have to multitask. Beyond countering these fads, business research can also be useful for individual companies. I'll take an example from F-Secure, run by Mr. Risto Silasma, who is uh, also a board member of Nokia and an angel investor investing in many Finnish software companies. He completed his master's thesis in 2009, and I gave comments to his thesis. He wrote how the research-based view enabled him a new way of thinking about the strategy of F-Secure, the company that he was running at that time, that he founded also. The problem that he was facing was that F-Secure was producing a data security product, and they were smaller than their competitors. They were targeting the consumer markets, and the technology that they're providing is something that is very hard for an individual consumer to evaluate. If your antivirus software works, it should stay out of the way, keep you safe, and you, you might not even realize when there's virus on your computer. So how do you convince your customers that your product is better than your competitors if the customers cannot really objectively evaluate the product? You do it by marketing. The problem is that marketing depends on scale and brand. And for example, F-Secure in the United States was competing with Symantec, which was several times larger than F-Secure, had more brand recognition and more resources. So what kind of strategy should F-Secure apply in this case? So Mr. Silasma started thinking about this problem through the resource-based view. He documents his thinking in his master's thesis, which you can found on the Aldi University website. He, he identified that brand is something that makes the difference, and they cannot possibly compete with uh, Symantec just by, with their own brand. So how can we either negate the brand advantage, make the brand a non-issue, or how do we get external resources that allow us to put our product, combine it with a better brand? He came up with the idea that he is selling, uh, that the company will sell the product mostly unbranded and sell it through telecom operators so that the telecom operator who sells the internet service also sells this data security package. So, for example, if you have an internet connection through ELISA, then ELISA branded uh, security service is actually provided by F-Secure. Leveraging these brands from telecom operators allowed uh, F-Secure to negate the brand advantage by Symantec and then allowed the company to, to grow many times bigger than what it was when it started this strategy. The idea for, uh, came by reading business research. 
Now, we might ask, why do we need research? Why can't we just ask successful people what they did and then do the same ourselves? So why just not ask Elon Musk how to be an entrepreneur? Well, there are three reasons. The first reason is that if you read the biography of Elon Musk, you can see that his lifestyle is something he is basically constantly working that most people wouldn't want to have. The second reason is that we have a thing called fundamental attribution bias in psychology and it means that, that when we succeed we are likely to attribute the success to something that we did even if the success was, was by chance only and if we fail we are likely to attribute the failure to external factors such as chance instead of something that we did so when you are a successful person you might not be the best person to explain why you succeeded because of these biases. The third reason is that the effects of what we do on any outcome, we call these causal effects, vary between people and organizations. Let's take some look at some data from a study that I did with uh, Ed Luong, who unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago. We did this survey study of Finnish consultant companies over a couple of years, and we wanted to understand if ambition and the level of, of growth orientation or growth willingness, whatever you like to call it, affects company growth rate. The background for this research question was that at the time of doing this study, there were talk in the Finnish media that Finnish companies are not sufficiently growth oriented. So once you reach a certain scale and high large standard of living, then the entrepreneur doesn't want to grow the company anymore. If we had more growth oriented companies, we would have more growth and which is good for the economy. That is how the argument goes. We wanted to understand if the argument actually holds. So we measured companies' growth orientation and we also measured their growth rate. Here you have the data as a scatter plot. And the growth rate, willingness, or growth orientation, willingness to grow is here. And uh, this is the three year, the y axis, the dependent variable, is the three year growth. And uh, it's compound average growth rate. These data show us that those companies that grew the most were also very growth oriented or, grow, or willing to grow. And those, but the effect is not as straightforward. We can also see that those companies that did the, the most poorly were also the most growth oriented. There is a small effect on growth willingness on growth rate. But the more pronounced effect is that when you increase your willingness to grow, your ambition level that typically leads to increasing risk taking and risk taking increases the odds of successful outcomes but it increases also the odds of failure. So we get outcomes of high growth and we get outcomes of less growth or even decline if you take, if you try to grow too much. Now the question is that if we only study these successful companies and we ask the successful companies what they did to grow, what kind of conclusion would we have? We would have a conclusion that ambition Willingness to grow is the main ingredient of growth. But these companies wouldn't tell us that going hard work for growth also increases the risk of failure. So this is the reason why we need research. We need to take a look at things systematically. So we need to have data on both positive outcomes and negative outcomes. We also we we need to understand not also only why. Elon Musk succeeded. We need to understand that if you have a person who is willing to take insane amount of risk like Elon Musk did, what happens to those people that take risk that are not Elon Musk? It turns out that if you take a lot of risk, then some of those people or companies are going to fail as well. So that is why we need to have data that is systematic through experiments and observations. Finally, to uh, 
link this back to real business problems. So business research tries to understand businesses generally and tries to come generate generalized knowledge. You also need to do research within companies, like market research, customer satisfaction studies, employee satisfaction studies, and so on. Studying business research methods allows you also to do this kind of more applied research within businesses. The methods that we use are pretty much the same, it is just that the questions are different. For this reason, understanding business risk methods will be helpful for people who don't do research, academic research, but also who do research in businesses.